Okay. Thank you. Okay. That was recording. I hope some of my friends record so. <laughs> and then you mute all the participants as well. So thank you. Oh. You go, you click, you click on participants. Oh, participants, yeah, okay. Uh, then you will see. Oh, mute all, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll mute all. Okay. Okay, so uh, along the way when I was doing my research you know, and 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 uh, collecting all the data, I also gained knowledge from lots of friends. You know? Most of my knowledge are all from friends, not me alone. I couldn't really um, uh, achieve that, that turning curve of knowledge you know, so fast. But I have friends who gave me feedback, you know, uh, the importance of genealogy. They asked me also, can you help me find uh, the family? Can, can you help me find the other family? Can I find someone who's dead, you know, where the graves are? So with all this information, actually, you know, uh, accelerated my learning curve. Uh. So from, from, from these experiences, uh, I came up with this definition. Uh. This definition could be common. Some definitions could be unique, you know, but this is how I see it, how, how I see genealogy you know, uh, along the way. So what, what is written here is genealogy, also known as a family tree, has always been taken for, taken for granted. Nobody cares about genealogy today. You know? they, they just say, oh, that's a past. Oh, let's move forward. And they always say, move on, move on, move on. So that's, that, kind of that kind of mentality usually, usually cause people to not care about their descendants. Eh? So, in the, so there are people who, are really, who really took care of, uh, of, of their genealogy. In the past, royal families took meticulous effort to record details of every newborn and marriage to preserve their family lineage. Okay, in, in Nusantara, in Nusantara, in, in this Southeast Asia, most of the Malay uh, uh, Sultanic, the royal families, they actually preserve the genealogy. Okay, they preserve the genealogy. So this, influ this sort of habit actually spilled out to the commoners like me. You know? like me so uh, it's not me, but probably my, my forefathers, they have oral record. But none of them actually drew any lines or any documentation. But they, they do remember where we came from. The genealogy provides a way to connect with the past while building a future. It gives people a sense of origin while also creating a sense of pride. If you know, if you know your descendants, you, you have some pride. You, you know, why do, they, why do they come here? You, you know of their, their pros. It maintains the social status of clan. It is a time capsule. It's a time capsule huh? and preserves culture. Last but not least, it establishes family rights when it comes to inheritance. That's important. Huh? Genealogy is an excellent primary source in rediscovering untold histories today. I call genealogy a primary source. You know? Archaeologists have their own primary source. Historians have their own primary source. But to me, you know, because I'm not a historian or, or archaeologist, you know? so the only primary source I could think of are stories from people. People who are alive you know, before they die. These are sources you can get from them and you can make history of it. Okay, there are connections. A single line of genealogy could conceivably be so valuable that when multiple strands placed together could reveal one historical fabric of a forgotten clan or nation. You know, you have, you have a genealogy of, of A, you have genealogy of B, C, D, E, F. You put this together, it's actually a piece of history you know, of a particular place. So that's what I think most of us are doing quietly. You know? Same for me, you know, when I was uh, looking for his, uh, history of the lost palaces, which I'm going to touch later. Uh, that's, that was a big breakthrough for me. To, when, I just, to, when I discovered the lost palace, uh, I realized that there are stories behind it. And I started to look more, look for it more. And, you know, from story, stories from people, some of them passed away already. Actually told me there, there is a house here, there is a palace here, there is an Istana here. There was an embassy, a consulate that you know, served the people of Pahang. And that's where I started to really keep looking for uh, stories and I uncovered 20 istanas. Actually, there are more, more to come, which I'll, I'll share with you, with you uh, later. Huh? So this is how I define genealogy. Okay, when we know our genealogy, we will know our ethnic ethnicity. Okay, why is it important? It also debunks negative perceptions, like the boogeyman. 
Okay, I'm sure some of you heard of the boogie man. No? Yeah, yeah I know boogie. If you go to if you type boogie in YouTube, you, you know it's like a shake my boogie, you know, that, that song. But you know, the word boogie man actually came from the word boogies. No? Okay, there are other versions, you know, the boogies in Africa, boogies in boogie man in, in South America, boogie man in, in Japan, they have their own boogie man. But then from what I got in some old Dutch records, they actually classify the boogies as boogeymen. They say that they say the kids, if you don't sleep at night, the boogeyman will come. Boogie, yeah, boogeyman. This drawing was drawn by my son, Shaquille Sarafian. Okay, so uh, another another uh, record was also uh, in the British collection. They said that the, this map belongs to the pirate. It's a, it's a pirate map, a pirate's chart. And when you look at it properly, the writing is all in boogies. So the, the, the Europeans also classify the boogies as pirates. You know, because they couldn't control the spice trade. We, we don't want to, we don't want to uh, go along their lines and they call us pirates. So these are some of the, some of the uh, misconceptions that we have now. And this is the famous one, you know, Boogie Street. No? When you say Boogie Street, people think of the Boogie Street. Okay, this Boogie Street, see, you have all the, you have all the people dancing, you have the transatites here. So this was popular in, in, Boogie, in Boogie Street. Okay, and you can see this, uh, this uh, Mat Saleh, uh, Mat Saleh, this, this Ang Mo behind. Okay, uh, just to subtract a bit, uh, the word Mat Saleh comes from the word Mat Sailor. You know, Mat Sailor, if you know about it. So we, why they call Mad Sailor? Because if they come to Singapore, they come to Bugis Junction and some other places, they got drunk and go, go crazy. So they were called Mad Sailor. La. So the, the, the Malay, Malay slang eh, from Mad Saleh, from Mad Sailor becomes Mad Saleh. La. So I hope you learned something today. Uh, so this, this was the misconception of Bugis Street. La. Okay, Bugis Street, Bu yeah, Bugis Street has a, also of, of this, uh, this uh, uh, scene uh, in, in the 60s and even 70s. So uh, from from that gene from that genealogy uh, genealogical journey that I, I wanted to start, I also started to identify uh, interrogate the Bugis people, uh, you know, who 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 they were, because I just want to clarify to people that the Bugis were, were a good lot. Uh. It's not what you thought of before. So I came, I normally normally came up with all these questions of uh, who, what, where, when, why, how, okay, who they were Bugis, okay, they were, what they were traders. They were mercenaries and kingmakers. They came from South Sulawesi. They were known, they were popular between the 14th and 20th century. So you see Bugis everywhere. They sail to the 14,000 islands in the Malay Archipelago to trade. So when they trade, they will settle from one point to another. So they come to Singapore as early as that period or even earlier. So when they say that the Bugis came to Singapore after uh, Raffles say that it's a free port, I think you know, that's not really true. They actually came in very early, even the Chinese and the Indians. Okay, why? Okay, because, because I want to know the Bugis presence in Singapore. Okay, we, at least I know why they were here before. Okay, how do I do this? How do I get about this mission? The only way I could do it is through genealogy. Okay, okay there, are other, there are other areas where you can investigate your, uh, your ethnic community. Okay, you can go to the library, you can look for uh, secondary resources. But then to me, another way is also to look at your genealogy because genealogy tells a lot. Yeah. Okay, genealogy embracing history, culture, and moral values. Okay, so when I look at the genealogy, it's the same thing again. I set up a few, the same questions. The concept of me uh, to investigate and interrogate my, uh, my, my origins. So you see, when, how, how I go about it is I put, okay, who? Family tree. What is it? Family heritage. Okay, I want to know what's the heritage. Okay, where? I have to look for family members to help me construct the genealogy. Okay, when? Okay, family timeline. Okay, from the, from the members, you, from the people that you know, and you ask them what's the timeline? Uh, when was your father born? When your father passed away? What did he do? What was his experience? What did he see in Singapore? So these are the things that you can uh, you can try later after this lecture. You know, lecture presentation is not lecture. So after this, you can print screen this temp print screen this template. You can use this as a way to identify your family, and that's genealogy. Okay, so what whatever I share with you today, it's not just about me, not about not only about the boogies, but you can use my presentation to identify your family as well. Okay, you can start up your genealogy right after this presentation. 
you check your, who's your father, who's your mother, no, who's your grandparents, then from there things just burst open. You'll be very surprised what you can uncover. Why? Because you will know your family culture, eh? the way they live, integrity. And how, okay, back again, eh? appreciating genealogy. How do you appreciate? Okay, how do you look at it? Because genealogy is, is one powerful tool to identify your history. So you see, just now, I've, 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 said, I've mentioned to you about the definition. Eh? So you know, from, from here, all these stories, so there are many ways, of, ways that you can embark on to identify your genealogy. Some people, they were royal families, they want to know where they come from. I've got lots of friends who are of royal lineage in Singapore. Uh, the, uh, the Bugis lineage, they call it Daing Chalak. Uh, Daing Chalak, Daing Mariwa. These were the Bugis prince, prince that came to, Singapore, came to Asia and you know, they became the kings of Malaysia, the Selangor, you know, royal families. So there are, there are people who come to look through their royal lineage. Some, you know, some they look for their, you no, know, their, their, their cultural uh, inheritance. Some of them they look for their, their you know, their inheritance, you know, their harta or their, uh, their piece of land. To me, to me, you know, when I look at it, you no, know, I, I look at the name Bugis big everywhere. To me, there is a pride. So what drove me is the, the sense of pride. Okay, why? You know, why were there lots of Bugis names? I want to know why. So that question drove me a bit crazy. Like, okay, why is there ethnicity important? So that we know our origins and the choice of our forefathers have made to come to Singapore. Okay, so you know, you, when you look at your genealogy, you will look at the, the forefathers that stepped into, on, into Singapore no? and why they chose Singapore as uh, a place where they want to settle. Okay, their perseverance to prosper and excel have contributed to the rapid growth and pride of our nation. Okay, after, just after National Day, so you know, I just want to share with you, like, you know, why is it like this? So we look into the we look into the uh, the genealogy aspect of how I did my story. Okay, you can do the same thing as what I have done. Okay, and I'm still doing it. I'm still investigating, interrogating. So, family tree. Okay, who is family tree? So this is how you all can start to do your uh, family genealogy. Okay, this is a bit, maybe some of you find it a bit complex. Yes, I agree. So you can start with the word me, you know, the word me. From me, then you write who's your brother, your sisters, then you write who's your father and your mother, your, your parents. Okay, this looks very paternal. Okay, it looks very paternal. Okay, uh, yeah, logically paternal, you know, the bloodline, uh, the, the father's bloodline are, are the ones who continue. Okay, but you know, when you do, you can also do father and mother. It will be very complicated, but you will see your genealogy in a real three-dimensional form. Okay, genealogy is not two-dimensional. It's three-dimensional. See, sometimes when you, look at, when you look at the lineage of kings, it's always two-dimensional. But if you look at it properly, you know, they marry second wife, third wife, or they have, you know, uh, they, they, they remarry, or you know, there is a death or birth or adoption. So you have a very three-dimensional uh, genealogy. So for this, this one I'm showing you is just two-dimensional, but you can start off like this. Okay, you can start off with your with your father, yeah, your grandfather, great grandfather. You keep asking them. You keep asking them who your great grandfathers were before. This will really help you identify the history of your family and eventually history of Singapore. Okay, history of a certain place. See how it all started. A simple family tree will, will make a big difference in how we see ourselves as a family, a country, and a nation. Because they tell you the stories of what happened in 1965, tell you what's happening in 19, uh, 1945, you know. They have lots of stories, tons. You know, you'll be very surprised. The best part is when you ask them, they'll be very surprised. Hey, you you like you want to know our genealogy? These old people, when you ask them, they really they become very surprised. And without knowing, they will spill out everything they want to talk. You, know, you start recording. You don't write. There's no point for you writing because when you write, you miss lots of things. You know? so you keep recording. Then they, then they would say, "Oops, I sh I shouldn't have told you that." No, but that is that is actually the spice of the history. Just record it. So it's very important. Okay. So when I when I did my when I did my research, you know, I found out that oh, uh, there is this uh, aunt, a great auntie of mine said oh your grandfather was once a police officer. No? You know, there is an uh, there is a people from the archive who came in the eighties and interviewed him. So I typed I typed my grand auntie's name, my late grand auntie, sorry not being last name, and this archive actually came out in the in the record in the national archive. Okay, very very rare no? for a commoner like me. No? I'm I'm just a commoner. Uh, but then you see, they, they even write, they even write. So there's something special about my, my great grandfather. Okay? 
Sarma Bindasim was born in the year 1919 in Tanjung Ru. Okay? His, her father was actually Dasim, not da Dasim, was a Bugis and he worked as a police officer. So this was this is a piece of good news. And I discovered this story many years back. Well, not many years back, I think about only 12 years ago. It was very recent. But things just poured in. Huh? So what is it? Okay, so I'm going to come back to that genealogy. Okay, so what? So when, when, when I know about when I know him about, about him about being a Bugis, uh, I start to look for the Bugis heritage. No, I just went off track to see the history of the Bugis, just to just to boil the, the, the interest. Uh. So I realized, oh, the Bugis were quite quite uh, fantastic uh, in those days, like no. Uh, now uh, we try to be fantastic also. Uh. Okay, the, they were they were the founding fathers of trade in Singapore. Besides the Chinese, also the Bugis, the Chinese, the Indians, so they were the traders. They were the mega traders, big traders. Okay, we have the, we, of course we have the Orang Lao so, uh, doing their own trade exchange, exchange of goods with the European settlers. But then, when 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 these people, when these big boys came to Singapore, they they were really doing big trading. They come in hundreds of vessels. So there were there were period, there were period in, in Singapore where they call it the Bugis season and the junk season. The junk is the Chinese. So the Chinese junks will come. And when they come, ultimately they will exchange, they will do butter trade. So my grand auntie told me, oh, wrong spelling. Okay, my grand auntie told me that our forefathers were captains, sailors, and traders. So it was true. My great-grandfather was a, was a captain of the ship. And his name actually appeared in history in, and was recorded in University of Malaya. That one I'll share with you later, later. Yeah, so, but then these were the ships that they, they came. So you can see the Bugis ship uh, approaching Kalang River and you can see Fullerton Hotel today. It was very old. So this was typically a Bugis ship. And this Bugis ship is called Pinisi or Palari. Palari, you can see. And they sail very far. They sail from Sulawesi to Singapore, 1,800 kilometers. But they, they, they sail to trade. So the Bugis people, they were maritime society. Okay, they were not Orang Laut. They don't live in the sea, but they use the sea as a means to trade. Okay, so they were, this were the Bugis people uh, in, in, during, during uh, the, the olden times. Okay? They, this is how they dress. Okay, the, this, this is, uh, Bugis Singapore. Okay, they, have, they even have records of how the Bugis people look like before. And this is the hat you know, they wear, the okay, Sonko. This is the Bugis of today. Okay, the Bugis today, they, they dress up like that. And we still we still dress like that. No, I, I do get my friends together uh, in during ceremony uh, to dress up just to relieve the Bugis. And we actually share to the public that this is how the Bugis like in, in not in Bugis Junction but the but the Bugis attire. Okay, so so, so uh, along the way I also tried to discover uh, Bugis food. Uh, I, I discovered the Bugis food were quite popular and they have their own name, like this uh, Chotomakasa, uh Epo Epo. Epo Epo in Bugis is called Jalang Kotak. Sounds odd, huh? but that, that's Epo Epo. And it was claimed it was origin the, origin, the origins from the Bugis. And this is uh, Burasak. It's a Bugis ketupat. Uh, so I, I, I'll, I'll touch on this uh, later in another lecture. So uh, from, 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 that, uh, from that research, you know, I discovered that the, the Bugis were quite colorful. They were, they, were, they were quite well known in Singapore. Uh, you see, you have the Bugis chart. This are the sailing charts. So you have to see, look at the stamps and notes. You have you have Bugis ships on the on the ten dollar note, on the hundred dollar note, and that's my cousin Fadli. His his marriage. Okay, this was two years ago, and he really took effort to dress up like a Bugis, like a Bugis uh, couple. So so that's a that's a Bugis ceremonial attire. That's a Bug, that's a Bugis man, and that's a Bugis that's a Bugis Chris. If you see behind here, I've got a got the collection of Chris, which I'm going to share with you later. So uh, along the way, we also learned that there were lots of Bugis taboo, uh, the pantang larang. Okay. This is just a, a fraction of, of a long list of the Bugis uh, taboo. Uh. And one of the interesting one is uh, the third one. Do not turn the fish. If you turn the fish, your boat will capsize. Yeah. It's just, actually, this type, of, this type of taboo is just to remind the kids, don't turn the fish because there's lots of bones. If you turn the fish, lots of bones, huh? if you were to just take the flesh, huh? you will you know, get choked by the, by the bone. So these are the things that 
the, the bookies seniors normally tell to the to the young ones or to the young links not to not to do that or to do this. No? Okay, like so the, the last one, do not sit on a pillow or your butt will swell. So this is one of the bookies taboo, which I believe it also appears in the Javanese and Boyanese, okay, but in a different form. So these are the things that I, I discovered. Okay, now we get back to the genealogy again. Okay, where do we get our genealogy? Okay, how I started my genealogy, where I got it. Now, this is the picture that, that really link us together. No? Okay, if you look at this picture, this picture on the left, Sarima does him. She was one who gave the account, the accounts of my uh, great grandfather or her father, Daing uh, Dasim bin Daing Muhammad. So she she gave the, the this lady, this picture, Sarima, uh, the lady on the left, the old lady on the left, not the young ladies, the old ladies. Okay, so she she was one who gave the account of of of, of my. Great grandfather, she tells lots of stories, so she's like a tip, she's like a radio fusion, no? just keep talking. And I managed to record some and write, I wrote some. So, that, and this conversation took place in the year 2007. So, when she, when she talked to me, everything, I, you know, I, I recorded. Okay, this photo was also taken by me in 1985, 1986. So, I, I took this photograph because uh, my father tells me, okay, go to the kitchen, take photograph, and this was in the kampong. So I took a photograph of what she was cooking, but I didn't know that she would be the one that's going to help me open up the genealogy. So when I, when I, when I met her again in 2007 or 2008, about two years before she passed away, you know, very sad, um, she told me everything uh, from, uh, uh, from what your, my great-grandfather did, who my great-great-great-grandfather was, what was he doing. He was the first one that came to Singapore in the 1800s. Okay, his name was Daing Saban. So she told me lots of things, lots of things. So she told me everything, then I, I started to get excited and I, and I posted this photograph on my Multiply. Before Facebook, there was this social media called Multiply. So I posted it Multiply and a, year later, and a year later, these two ladies on the top, the top right, two ladies, they were my friends before. You know, when I opened social media, I, I just uh, add friends. So, so, they, so they were, we, were, we were just friends. Huh? So and she told me, hey, I think that's my grandmother. Oh, she did the, the, the lady in stripe. Her name is Junita Samad. So she, uh, and, uh, Norida, Norida Raman. Okay. So these two ladies said, I think this, this is our, this is our, our grandmother. Said, huh? If it's, your, if it's your grandmother and it's my great auntie, then we were cousins. And I, I, and I also know this gentleman here below, a one in red shirt. His name is Rahimi Wahab. He is the editor for the latest book being launched, uh, Majula and also Beyond by Sentinel. He's an editor. Uh, editor, his name is Rahimi Wahab. So we were we were friends before that. We don't even know that we were cousins. No, but no. Uh, so when no, when this uh, Junita, the striped lady, said, "Hey, we are cousins," then she told the cousin, her cousin Rahimi Wahab, they were cousins. And I contacted Rahimi Wahab, and it was like a, the happiest moment in in identifying the the Bugis ancestry. I was very happy. You know? I was very happy that I started to draw. Start to, start to sketch the, the, the lineage. And they seem to know, and their father, their father seems to know more about the history of my, my first cousins than me, myself, or my father. Okay, I hope my uncle, uncle still listen this, to this also. Right? Because, you know, sometimes some people just can't be bothered to identify the genealogy. They just want to move on. But there are some people who really treasure. Because when you know a genealogy, it's all about family. It's about family, it's about integrity, it's about friendship. So, so, so gentlemen like uh, Rani Wahab, uh, Junita and Norida, and there are a few other uh, cousins that I, I mean, I can't mention, a lot of them, they actually treasure the gene their genealogy. And some, of the, and some of them actually related to the prince, the Bugis prince, the Mariwa, which I want also, also will be another chapter of my, my presentation. So this, this thing picks up my, 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 identif my ident uh, to identify my genealogy. And that's the family, you know, the Rahimi Wahab's family, you know, on the other end of my uh, line, which is uh, under, which is Sarima and Dato Omar. So from the genealogy, so I did, from the, from this study, so I discovered my great grandfather's grave for the first time. Okay, that's me in uh, in Kubo Kasim, my great grandfather, uh, in Dasim, the police officer. He was buried there. Okay, and that's my and the bottom left is my uh, my grand grandfather. Sariman, which is the brother of Sarima, 
Okay, the picture in the center is Sarima, the purple shirt lady. Uh, this was the time when I actually recorded her, convers her conversation about the lineage. She was so surprised that uh, I wanted to do the genealogy. Some people say, oh, Sarafian, genealogy is an old-fashioned thing. You know, nobody wants to do genealogy because it's the past. Let's move on. But I said, no. To know the future is to know the past and the present records it. So she started to sing. As she sang, I recorded it. You know? And I, I've, I've, because of my seriousness, eh, my father said, oh, this, uh, this bottom right picture is actually a picture of me. That's a little, the little boy, is me. Was me. Of the Bugis Kampong in Pulau Tekung. So some so my ancestors actually came from Pulau Tekung. Okay, they are a piece of that land in Singapore, but also stay in Pulau Tekung. Yeah. So this is the family. This is the finally I got this picture of uh, of my of the of the same the one with black shirt. Uh, my grandfather is on the right side of the picture, which is the one the one folding the arms. That's my grandfather Sariman, and the man standing second from the right. Is my father. So they gave this picture to me. Okay, so I can since you're serious in genealogy, I'll pass you this picture. This was given to me by uh, one of my one of my uncle, Kasim Sariman. So he said, you, you keep this picture. Since you're the one who's serious in genealogy, you keep it. So I've got lots of other pictures besides this. So this is a picture I showed you just now. Okay, that's my grandfather. You can see uh, my grandfather is one in yellow arrow. So you look at him and look at me. Uh, do we look, do we resemble? He's, very, he's a very serious guy. Dying does him. And I just want to have a stick pick you know, of, of my, my metal lineage. You, know? okay, you, can see, you can see that. You can see here is my the petal, my, my, the red arrow on the left is my father. And the yellow arrow is, is my, my, grand, my great grandfather. Okay. Then uh, on the right side, the arrow, uh, that's my mother. Okay, my, my mother is, uh, is, is mixed blood. Okay, so you know, that one I will share with you in our presentation because maternal line maternal uh, genealogy is also very complex it goes all the way back to holland so uh okay when okay the family timeline so after i ident identify the families after i identify rami wahab after i identify i i got to know stories from junita samad you know i started to do the uh, family timeline seriously See, look at that. that that's my gen that's the genealogy. Okay, my great grandfather. So you can I'm sure you all I, I saw the my friends, my Chinese friends, they, their genealogy is so detailed. They even have photographs, uh, photographs of, of their great great grandfather, you know? And if they don't have photograph, they sketch it or they paint it. I, it was really awesome. Really awesome. No? They, they they really took pride in their genealogy. And I, well, for me, no, I, I I think our family missed the boat. Like, we didn't do any painting or drawing. No? So you know it's this. It's quite, it's quite difficult, but at least you, you start something. Okay, so the family tree is a window to history. One way, of, one way to know your culture is to draw a family genealogy, which I wish you all do this after this presentation. Okay, rumors also mentioned that I belong to the certain Bugis royal lineage. Now they say that, hey, Sarafian, I think you belong to some royal lineage. So I said, sure or not? No? Don't, ah, the only way is to check. Nah. So I began my investigation. Ha, ah, I see. This is the, a full blown in 2005 yeah, uh, of my genealogy. So you look below there, they're all my cousins and my sisters and you know, everything. Uh, so you can see, uh, you can see uh, Rahimi Wahab, you can see Junita and, and other cousins. So some of the people who, uh, you know, uh, who were my friends, they were actually my cousins. And they're, they're, you know, this thing's still growing. It's still growing. Okay, this is just Sariman, this is just my grandfather lineage. And, and some of them actually bore more children here. Yeah? And this thing just kept going horizontal until, until uh, uh, the Isle of Bain, the Isle of Benta, you know, Real Islands, and even Gunung Daik, you know, which uh, I'm still rediscovering. Okay, so just to tell you, uh, that one of the lineage actually went to Okinawa also. So you know, this this is a big story which I'll, I'll share also later on. So this is the genealogy that, that I, I I did uh, beginning 2010 until 2000. 15, yeah. So I, I, I stopped there because it's just too much, you know. I, I have to really expand the, the, the network. And, and, and I'm, still re, I'm still discovering and rediscovering. So this is a typical, this typical genealogy you know, of, of the royal family. Okay, of, uh, this, this picture, just to show you that uh, a royal lineage from K. Shaha in Kuala Lumpur. 
And she was the one that actually tell me the mechanisms, the mechanics of how to do a good genealogy. And she showed me you know, the, the lineage of the kings from, from the Bugis Empire. So if I were to do my genealogy, seriously, it could be as long as this. Okay, so from, 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 the, from the knowledge of doing genealogy, you know, I became a bit adventurous. Because somebody told me that you know, I, I was I belong to the lineage of kings. Yeah. So I started to examine the lineage of the Malay and the Bugis royal family in Asia and Singapore. So this is what I did. So I, I did all this uh, with the help of, of, uh, of a scholar, a lecturer, Professor Carl Trocky. So he actually looked at it. So this is what I did. So I did it. No, I, did, I realized oh, I don't belong to any of them. No? I, I'm, I'm, I'm just an enthusiast. But when I did this, genealogy of kings, I started to uncover istanas. I started to uncover istanas in Singapore. Okay, this, not these two istanas. Huh? Okay, these two istanas are the popular ones we know in Singapore. The istana president, Kalima Yaakob, and also the istana Kampung Gelam, okay, Sultan Hussein. So these are the two istanas that we know today. Okay? But there are more istanas in Singapore. You know, from the genealogy, from the families, from the cousins of the kings, so they, I realized that there were lots of stars in Singapore that we have forgotten. Not forgot, we have forgotten, not properly recorded, no, and, and uh, it just, just disappeared. So these are the stars I discovered also. So just imagine from, from genealogy, you discover lots of things. You discover lots of uh, hidden details of Singapore. Singapore is so colorful, yet no, we thought that Singapore started in the year, you know, uh, 1819 or, or 1965, no? but Singapore is, is really very deep history. See, you can see the Istana Tarasal, which I think you know, Bidadari. that's Bidadari. Istana Bidadari. You have Istana Perak, you have Istana Aigamuro. In, in Aigamuro, you know where? Uh, if you go to Changi Airport, the runway for Terminal 2, there was one, once an Istana there. I'm sure you're surprised. So these are the are the istanas that we, we see in Singapore uh, before. Istana Mahligai Pahang at Sime Park. Yeah? At this uh, Mike Ritchie, the golf course there. So there was an istana there before. Okay, I met the family and he, they actually testified there was an istana there before and a few other istanas. So this is just, okay, I'll just sidetrack a bit. This is just one of the istana that I want to share with you. It was once at Mount Faber and it was known as Radin Mas Primary School. Okay, it was built in the year 1840 by Daeng Ibrahim for his son. Anku Khaled. So they built this istana at, at this uh, Mount Faber and it became a istana for, for, for him and his family. And in the year 1921, uh, they all left and it became a school. It became a school, Radin Masari School until 1980. Today, if you go there, you don't see this thing anymore. You will see Pearl Condominium. Very sad, huh? So all these are, all these are gone. So these are, these are just one of the many structures in Singapore uh, that was once in Stana and now became a condominium or just a park. Yeah. So this is the power of genealogy. I just want to share with you, this is actually the power of genealogy. From genealogy, you uncover something that you really don't expect. You can find a piece of land that belongs to you once upon a time. No? Uh, so you know, these are some of the adventures you can, you can take. You, can, you, you realize that suddenly your neighbor that you were always angry with uh, are related to you. Okay, so these are really surprising stuff that you can rediscover. Okay, why? Okay, why I do this genealogy? Okay. Okay, first, firstly, I want to know that I, I, want, I discovered that the Bugis, they, they were maritime society. And, you know, and I also discovered why they, why they sail. Why they sail, why they were lots of competitors at the time. You know, until this guy, this gentleman here, Sultan of Makassi, that, uh, God has made the earth and the sea and has divided the land amongst men and made the sea common to all. This is the, this is the, the kind of a pledge the Bugis took, you know, that the earth is free for all, no boundary. That's, that made them want to sail. And when they think of God, they know that they'll be safe to sail. And they sail as far as Madagascar, you know, they sail as far as the Polynesian Islands. You know, some myths say they sail to America, I, 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 I don't know, but possibly. So this, they, was, they were sailors. They were sailors to trade. Of course, you know, they, there are times when they sail, they also try to colonize. They try to colonize certain island and make, make it their settlement. So you see, uh, this, uh, this, so from, from the genealogy again, I say, 
I mentioned to you. This is what I've, I've discovered about the Bugis. Okay, biggest powerful kingdom in Indonesia, Maritime Trade Network, highly sought after by regional consumers. Okay. They, they, were, they trade spice, tortoise shell, bird's nest, opium, gold dust, silk, and slaves. Okay, when you call it, when you say slaves, it's, not, it's actually not, it's not slaves. Not that bad after all. They were just laborers, but before they called it slaves. Okay, so these are, these are some of the histories. No? When, the, when the Dutch came in, they actually don't want to compete with them. They, they move out and they started to settle in Singapore, in Malaysia, Kalimantan, even Thailand. Okay, the, so I just want to touch a bit on the Bugis. You know, they are, the, the Bugis, they have one of the longest scripts in the world. Okay, they have one, one of the longest scripts in the world, uh, uh, um, approved, uh, mentioned by this UNESCO. Okay. It has 6,000 pages, and just to share with you, this is actually the simplified version of, of the, of the uh, Bugis script. So this is very simple. Uh, based, on, based on what they have men mentioned and studied, this book is still incomplete. There are still lots of things to rediscover. There was a period of time in the Bugis world in Sulawesi where everything became, everything was forgotten. Everything was in a turmoil state. And they actually found, they discovered this book, and this book actually put them back on the right path. So this this Lagaligo actually has this Lagaligo actually has lots of things. They have law, order. They have uh, reminders of, of of doing good things. They have maritime culture. They also have uh, uh, instructions of the art of dressing. So this thing just came back, you know, and they and they they actually uh, reclaim back their identity through this book. So this just to show you the memories of the world. Right? Okay, this uh, some of the some of the uh, Bugis uh, historic achievements: seventh uh, century, Sivijaya, third century. Okay, these are the Bugis charts. Okay, Bugis charts. So when you go to Bugis Junction, you just imagine this picture. They were not you know, not just Bugis people; they were maritime navigators. They were scholarly people. Uh, they they have all these charts written for sailing. If you look at the right. If you look at the picture on the right, okay, you look, you look at there is a, uh, in the middle of the chart, there is this uh, tree, blown tree. You know, this, this are actually annual, annual charts of, of the weather oh, before they sail. Sorry. Okay, it was known, it was also mentioned that the, the Bugis came from, uh, from the descendants of, of, uh, of Prophet, Sol Prophet Solomon and this uh, Queen of Balkis, which is Balkis in, in Sheba, in Yemen. So these are some of the, some of the myths. Uh, some say it's true, some say it's myth. To me, I just absorb first and I'll, I'll decide later. Okay, so the word Balkis, eh? Queen Balkis, people say that the word Bugis probably will come from the word Balkis. Okay, this is the lineage of the, lineage of the kings eh? from City Malan King. Malan King is actually the, this uh, Balkis, okay? all the way until the five prince you know, in, the, in the modern era, which is actually uh, 1699. They, sorry, 1721, when, when they came to Asia and they, they captured Asia, they uh, captured Johor, and Daeng Chelak is the lineage of all the Selangor kings today. If you look at Selangor, you know, the Selangor descendants, the royal families, uh, they were from the Chelak. And if you look at the Johor, Sultan of Johor, uh, uh, Sultan Ibrahim, uh, he came from the, the lineage of Daeng Parani. So they were of Bugis descent. Okay, these are some of the some of the things I want to share with you. Know, the the Bugis, Sivina Pesi, uh, pride and honor. So whenever they you know, whenever they have prob when they have, whenever they have problems, uh, they will try to settle. Uh. But if they can't settle, they'll go into one sarong and they'll just step to death. Uh. So whoever will die the, the, is a loser. Uh. So these are the things the Bugis were uh, practiced before. Okay, so these are just to share with you how uh, Bugis settlements in Singapore. Okay, this, this is uh, how it looked like before when the Bugis came to the shore, came to came to Singapore shore. Yeah, I, 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 I drew this. I just drew one of them. And I, okay, this picture was taken by me in, in, in Singapore in East Coast. So I just want to show to you how it looked like. I, I just draw one and I cut and paste the rest of, just to show the intense atmosphere of how the Bugis came to Singapore. So this, but this is what was reported in the colonial papers in the year 1838 by one of the uh, Europeans said that they were invaded. But, one of the, but the chief said, no, it's, we are, it's not invasion. It's just the Bugis coming to trade. So this was how it looked like before. 
these are some of the quotes the Bugis uh, uh, had by the by the British people on Sir Raffles. He said the Bugis they are slow and deliberate in their decisions. Okay, but this once formed a final agreements once entered into into are uh, invariably observed and on their part. And the Bugis is never known to solve his bargain. So in short, when the Bugis said, okay, I'll take it, he'll take it. He will not back off. Okay? Either take it or fight. That's all. So it's like that. Lah. Okay, uh, so the Bugis character also very, very well, according to some, some people, they say the Bugis is also very hot-tempered. Uh, hot-tempered, they were very abrupt, they want to be fast. I think it's all because of the sailing nature, maritime nature. You know, when you want to sail, you've got to be very, very quick. You've got to be very, very precise. If you say a wrong command, if you give a wrong command, or if you're late, that's it. So they, to have all this in place, they are very, very aggressive, they're very abrupt, and they want things to be done in a very quick manner. So that's just probably the, how the Bugis character was sculptured. So this is just some of the uh, uh, information which I want to share with you. Okay, the Bugis town was once smack in the middle of Kapung Glam. That was in the 17th century, 16th century, you know, until they have to move out to the Kampung Bugis in Rocho. Uh, which is a map now, which, uh, it's over date. See the Bugis, you know the Bugis, uh, the Malays are already a minority in Singapore. And the Bugis is a minority of the, minority of, of, of the Malay race. So we are a minority of the minority. Uh, so very, very, we are very, very small. Yet I want to try to uh, uh, inculcate the sense of awareness of the Bugis people in Singapore together with some of my friends. So it's quite, it's quite, a, it's not tough actually, you know, if you really like something, what, if you like what you do, you can achieve it in more time. So these are some of the photographs of the, see of the Bugis, uh, Kampung Bugis, so all the ships all stay there. And you look at Madeka Bridge on the left, so the, the Bugis ships, the tall ships on the extreme left couldn't sail into the Rotary River and Kalan River, so they park outside. So those of you in the seven, those of those of you who remember Betrayed in the seventies, you probably you probably see this Bugis ships parked at the, along the beach of uh, Beach Road. So these are some of my research I did: narratives, oral records, and interviews. I realized that the Bugis settlements were actually at all these red markings which I've marked. So there are lots of Bugis settlements. You see in Bedo area, in Pasir Panjang a lot. You have in Tanjung Gul, not Tanjung Gul, uh, in, in Tuas, the industrial area, there was also a Bugis Kampong. Then you have these Bugis people uh, somewhere in the live firing area, Bajau, Ahmad King, Neo Tiu. There were lots of Bugis settlements there. When I was a little boy, my grandmother said, let's go to uh, Kampong Bajau. So Kampong Bajau is somewhere in Ahmad King, uh, in Lim So there were lots of Bugis Kampongs in the 70s, 80s. After that, it totally about uh, development. So you see, uh, from then on, I realized, oh, so because of that, you know, we have lots of, of these uh, Bugis, uh, uh, Bugis landmarks all over the shop. Okay, surviving traditions. Eh? Okay, in 2007, I, just, I started off this social media, Bugis Tamasik. Some of you might have come, came across it, some of you might have not. If you have not, you just join my page, you know, you'll learn a lot about the Bugis from my friends. So not only me, but my friends will also share uh, topics of the Bugis. Uh, uh, information, chat information about, about the history of Singapore. You can you can also learn from there, and uh, you can also ask questions. and And friends will answer, and some of my friends will answer. If not me, someone will answer. Someone more competent. Okay. So this was this was established by me and <coughs> my friend, Mr. Wafi Yudin. Okay. Uh, he's a, he's very competent in language. He's very young. He's I think he's uh thirty years old. He's in his 30s, early 30s. But his passion, uh, his passion uh, uh, in history and language uh, made him actually grasp the Bugis language fluently. So I got to know him 12 years ago, uh, no, 13 years ago. He was very young then. And uh, because of his interest, I asked him, can we want to open a, a, a social media to attract the Bugis community? He said, okay. So we started off, you know, we started off you know, until we actually got ourselves up, we got attention, we got media attention. And they interviewed us about three, four years ago about the about the Bugis in Singapore. So that's him. So until now we are still friends, so we are we are we are still doing our own research, you know, uh, uh, exhibition and all this stuff. So he's one of the cool guys. Huh? So we, this is this how we started. So we started off with the uh, Bugis interest and there were many times and we wanted to start our own society, but no, we we have to get lots of approval uh, from the government. Huh? So 
uh, until such time, I think, the year 2016, then we started off with, uh, we joined, we formed up a Bugis Society with, with friends. So this, uh, this, this blog is still ongoing, uh, ongoing. So you look at all, the, all my friends all dressed up uh, in the Bugis attire. It was a long way uh, since it started. Uh, so this is, uh, this is uh, the Bugis Malay Society Singapore, the founding members. Uh, was established in 2016 or 17, yeah. So I was I was the vice president here. That's Roger Khalid, the president. And these are all the members, all the all the people who actually got together and we did a exhibition in Malay Heritage Center. Still, so this to to me this was a very successful thing, la. Because you know, to uh, when I first started in 2007, some people laughed. Say, are you sure a Bugis society will, will come up? Will are we get to have uh, any exhibition or uh, Bugis is just a uh, you know it's just a uh, just the signboard and, and there's nothing. So it was a, was a challenge for, for us. Because of, that, because of that, we start to get together and think of some ways to make people be aware of who the Bugis people were and who the Bugis people are. So we, you know, we had our own exhibition. And I also did some survey about genealogy. You know, I always believe in genealogy. Because if you know, if you know your genealogy, it means you're really serious about your at your origins. So I came up with a survey. Okay, so I'm sorry this is in Malay. It was actually done in the years in 2015. So 2015, I started to uh, do a survey on genealogy. Okay. So I came up with these three questions. So the three questions are, okay, I'm, I am a Bugis and I have my family genealogy. Okay, how many people has that? Then I am a Bugis and I do not have a family genealogy. Okay, you know that you're a Bugis or you know that you're Hokkien. But you don't know, but you don't have a genealogy. Huh? Then the last question is, is, I think I'm a Bugis. Okay? You just think, you know, somebody say, you know, you're a Bugis. Or, okay. So uh, from here, I was kind of surprised that, you know, uh, my group, my, 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 the Bugis Thomas group actually has many people who, who kept their genealogy. And this is still growing. So I was very surprised, you know, they have their genealogy, but why can't they come forward? Why didn't they want to share uh, with the world, uh, with Singapore, with fellow Singaporeans that hey, I have a genealogy of Bugis? Huh? So uh, sometimes, you know, same for me, you know, I was also trying to share, but I don't have the guts. So now with friends together, it's, it's easy for me to share. Then again, I felt that this genealogy is still very private until I met K Mr. KK, uh, Jerome, and, and Cyprian. He said, hey, sorry, friend, you want to start a we want you to have to share with you your genealogy. No, I felt very honored. I said, I, I thought that the Bugis genealogy is something very isolated on its own. But when they came forward to me and said that, hey, sorry, we want to know your genealogy. No, I was really, I was, I was happy. I was happy. I, I was really surprised. That, oh, I, uh, finally, somebody wants to know. Then I realized that the, simple, the genealogy of Singapore is actually very established. Very established. They have their own genealogical uh, family or their, their interest group. I, I think it's a, it's, it's a, it's a bonus on you. Because just some languages, some languages. Huh? How are you, Aga Kariba? No? I'm fine. How about the Okay, talking about the just talking about the Bugis language. I do, I also have a friend. I also have a friend. Her name is uh, No Hati, No No Hati, No uh, Kat No Hati. Okay, she said to uh, she said to me, sorry, friend, you don't worry. If you if you don't know speak Bugis, huh? as long as you can say how are you, and I'm fine, the Bugis spirit will just come to you. Uh, her name is No Hati Saad. So she said, said so, so she tell me, if you know how are you or Aga Kareba, Aga Kareba, not Aga Apakaba, uh, but Aga Kareba in Bugis, then I'm fine, Kareba Mada Cheng. She said, once you can mention these two words, you are Bugis. Okay? Okay? So this is what is her, her perspective, which I believe is true. No, I, I feel, I can feel aura. Okay, okay, just hang on, let me just take my trace. So you hold on, eh? hold on. Uh, can I ask questions to you? Uh, is uh, um, Sarifa, Sarifa, uh, Fian? Yes. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. I, I must congratulate you in the amount of research you have done. I, in fact, feel ashamed of myself as a genealogist. So the amount of research I do is nothing compared to what you have done. You see? I oh. hope you, whatever you have done, you preserve it and you will hand it down to future generations for them to, to 
expand to act to to build a partner. Right? Definitely. Don't don't ever lose the works that you have so the fantastic work you have done. See? Definitely. Now, what yeah. qu questions that I have to ask you? Yeah. In the case of boogies, how do you define it to, to be a boogies? Do you just follow the father side or 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 because you have a boogies blood, therefore you are boogies? Uh, okay. In the direct. Uh, okay. Uh, can I touch on that question after my presentation? Maybe you raise okay. it. Uh, it's, it's very interesting. That's a good question. It's a very good question. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, okay. I just want to continue with my presentation first. Uh, I will answer that. Um, okay. Back to back to the back to the the boogies. Eh? If you look at if you look at the crease, eh? okay. This is this also signifies a a, a boogies a boogies crease lah. Okay, if you can, if you remember my 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 speech early on, we are maritime community. We are maritime community. So if you look at the trace, the trace also looks like a like a ship. It looks like a big like a big ship. Okay, so this this ship actually signifies a Bugis uh, a, a, a Bugis clan. Okay, when he will always put it on, he'll put it on, on on his waist in front, huh? and and they will walk on the streets. So when the when the other married, uh, communities see this guy walking, they say, oh, this guy is a boogie trader. And the size of the crease also signifies his status. Okay, like this big crease uh, signifies a sea captain. So the, so the other community, the Chinese or the Indians or the Malabar say, oh, this guy is coming and he's probably the, the captain. Uh, then they'll start to do trading. So this crease, uh, this crease, apart from just Apart from being a tool of deterrent, that means that when you discuss with me, make sure it's serious. It also shows his status symbol. Okay, so now, for now, it's just a collector's item. Okay, so this is a Bugis craze. I just want to share with you. Okay, this is how the blade looks. And maybe some of you have not seen the craze. Huh? So that's why when I give a, when I give a, a talk or a lecture, a heritage walk, huh? I'll also bring my craze to show people. You know, because some of them really want to touch a craze, but they feel scared. So this is how the craze looks like. This is a Bugis craze. Very huge. You know, very huge. And... And uh, uh, very sturdy. So this is a boogie space. Okay. okay, let me just get back to my presentation. Huh? So the, behind there are lots of other other, other boogie space, a boogie space, uh, Malay space, uh, got all the swords. Okay. So these are these are some of the collection that I have. Uh, don't worry, Philip. I'm 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 finishing. It's almost finished. Okay, so these are some of the collections. That you have the boogie fabrics. So these are also these are all items for items of trade in the during the Bugis uh, period in, in Singapore and Asia. So this is a typical Bugis wedding. You, know, you can see you can see today. Okay, this is a Bugis architecture. Okay, the Bugis house normally they have you know they have very very um, um, red angle squarish house, and they also have their spiritual beliefs of of uh, how the Bugis construct their houses. So this is very interesting. Well, they 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 they're very spiritual people. So I know when the first, so I, when I put myself back in time when I was discovering my boogies, which I think uh, boogies are just nothing other than just signboard. They actually have lots of things. The culture is really very steep, very deep. But you know, it's not really people don't really pay attention to these details, especially the boogies people. So this is uh, one of the picture, one of the uh, houses in Kampung Bugis, Kampung Bugis. See the Kampung Bug in Kampung Bugis, they actually they had this mosque. Okay, I'm not so sure whether it has been constructed or not, but I I do have a friend who said that there is a, a guy, a mechanic, who owns a workshop in Bugis, Kampung Bugis. He said that he actually saw this building there. Uh, it's a property of Encik Dola. Uh, so from from all the from all my heritage uh, uh, experiences and passion, I also conduct heritage tours together with a Singapore Heritage Society. That's Miss Trilene. Uh, I also uh, do it with my active member, Tamasic Rural Explorer Enthusiast, and 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 also with uh, another group, my community, uh, Mr. Leong, okay, the popular one. So he's one of those who who regularly organize uh, such uh, tours, and I will take that opportunity to share with Singaporeans what the Bugis culture is today and was before. I also share with them what the cultures that has been lost over time, so at least they know that the Bugis culture 
was so colorful before and what are the things that we keep until today. Okay, so these are some of the Bugis exhibitions uh, I'm actively involved in with my friends, uh, uh, Anche Ibrahim Arif and Haslina Ja'aman. Okay, so, so we also organize uh, uh, such um, functions, Bugis events uh, with, um, for Thomas Polytechnic. So Thomas Polytechnic, they say, can you do a cultural event? So uh, we, we do. Okay, so, so only last week, I just finished doing a Zoom event with Singapore Polytechnic about Bugis. Okay, because they just want to know what, what the Bugis are. Very interesting. No? The names are so huge, yet that many people don't really know about, about us. So it, it really uh, gave me the opportunity to share. It's very interesting. Okay, so I also gave, uh, I also do a gallery tour to my, to uh, the boys of Montford Primary School. I was from Montford before, so you know, the teacher says, since you're from Montford, you come back and, and contribute. Uh. So I brought them to Fort Canning, I brought them to Tolo Blanga, you know? I, I thought they were not interested, but the kids of today, they really have a very different concept compared to me at their age. You know? I, I, before I really go up, I don't care so much about them. But then, uh, they are more geared, they are more geared, more tuned to accept such historical facts. The, 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 and the questions they threw on to me uh, was really very, very, you know, very intriguing. I couldn't answer sometimes. So this, so these kids of today, they are really very, very, very unique. So just, just, uh, so just see, the, these are the, these are the colorful, uh, uh, the, 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 the United Colors of, of the Bugis. Yeah. Mostly checkered, mostly checkered. <coughs> they have the, you have the, you have the, the silat, the silat. Uh, was actually led by our friend here. You can see the, this guy with the yellow shirt, Andy Faisal. Uh, so he was, he's expert in the martial arts. Then we have uh, a few others. That things, that's my son in green. So these are the things that we, these are the things that we successfully have, uh, uh, have shared with the public. And this was only this year. Okay, it's really interesting. Uh, because of my, because of the genealogy, you know, but the journey, identifying the culture, you know, uh, I had, a, I had, I had, uh, I spoke interest to many people, uh, to the media. So they want to know what, what have I done. I also discovered lots of lost graves from just doing genealogy. So genealogy made me discover lost graves, lost istanas, lost identity. I, dis I also discovered the lives of Orang Laut. So it's really, it's really eye-opening. So if you do your genealogy today, you'll be surprised that what you stumble upon is something you really don't expect. Okay, just, just try it. Yeah. So, it all started from here. So, from this simple line drawing, it proves how far a simple genealogy could bring you. And what I've shown you today is what I have experienced. Okay, so this presentation has shown that, has shown that the art of genealogy has helped us rediscover the history of our family, culture, and nation. It instills a sense of pride a sense of belonging and love for Singapore, a place we call home. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. I wish I could say more. Okay, uh, Mr. Philip, I think you asked me something. Yeah, thank you, Sarafia. Philip has a question. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, so would you like to start answering that question? Okay, uh, Philip, I think you're asking about uh, how do you identify your... Okay, it's all about, it's all about adopting the identity. You know, uh, I have a choice. Okay, uh, let me just be open. Let me just be open a bit, but uh, I, I I can't go delve deeper into that. Uh, I am of a Bugis descent from my father's lineage. Okay, my mother's lineage. Uh, my mother's lineage is a mix. My pet, my maternal grandfather is a Dutch. My maternal grandmother is a Hokkien. So, it's a choice for me to adopt adopt which lineage. But you see, sometimes you see the, the dominant. When you're born, uh, when you live, when, as you grow up progressively, what are the dominant culture that your family has adopted? And that actually drives me to go into the Bugis culture. You know, to, to find my Dutch descent, uh, Dutch community, uh, Dutch uh, descent is a bit complex. But I've already discovered about 200, 200 names, which I will talk later. But I've got to ask permission from my, my mother before I talk about that. Uh. <laughs> Then the Hokkien. Hokkien, my, 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 my surname, the Hokkien is Ui, O O I. So that's my map. Ma 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 
uh, OOI. So that's my metal, metal side. Uh. So, but, but my father, simple. It's just Ben, 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 Ben. Sarafian, Ben Saleh, Ben Sariman, Ben Dasim, Ben Muhammad, Ben Sabban. Uh, so this is the generation. So that's, so it's, it's just like that. That's, that's how, that's how I, I, I chose to talk about the Bugis genealogy. And that's how I remember my auntie said that, oh, Bugis, when she, when she shot at Bugis, uh, it reverberate the whole, the entire part of my body. And I said, okay, like, I think we are Bugis, like, curse or be cursed, and it's still Bugis. So that's how I started, I embarked on the Bugis journey. And there, there, there are, and it's not only me alone, when I met Rahim Wahab, when I met Junita, they were saying that they were Bugis families. So it's the Bugis that they took pride of. Okay, then again, to answer uh, uh, Dr. Philip's question, is also a matter of choice. Okay, especially you're in the between. Huh? In between. Okay. Then maybe you, you can even choose a, a Dutch or a, 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 a Hokkien blood. So for, for me, I chose uh, Bugis because firstly, it's paternal. It's paternal line. Secondly, it's, uh, it's what I heard when I was young. Okay, that's my answer. So Sarafian said that uh, he, he, he drew his genealogy on a patrilineal basis because the family is a patri patriarchal family yes. you know, yeah. for him. Yeah. Unlike the Minang, the Minang, so the Minangs, they are yeah. like matricle, so they have the female language. What, what about, since we're talking about it, what about the larger Malay community in the Usantra? Are they more yeah. of patriarchal or matriarchal or there's a mix? Okay, uh, yeah. Um, majority patriarchal. Major, okay. Majority patriarchal. The, one, the, the, the lineage of kings that I showed you earlier on, they're yeah. all patriarchal. Okay. They they all um they all um look at the at the male at the male lineage. So in the Nusantra lineage. world, mostly patriarchal, except the Minang. Ah uh, yes. yes. That that is also as far back as the pre pre Islamic age. Is yes, exactly. So? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, all the way back to pre Islamic. You know. Um, uh, like if you look at the if you look at the uh, the the Puchi Balkis right, the Balkis uh, lineage, uh, uh, which is the Bugis, uh, it's all it's all patriarchal. Uh, so, okay. so uh, uh, Sarafian, do you see any question in your chat box? Because I cannot see anymore. Uh, Sarafian? Uh, yes. My name is Priscilla. I have a question for you. Yes, Priscilla. The crease that you saw, that, I, uh, that you show, has seven curves. Am I yes. right? Yes. And why is it curved? Because the Japanese used to uh, commit suicide if they did not do well, do something honorable. Yes. <laughs> uh, in a war, so they normally, uh, I was told that uh, is a kind of a knife that they will stab their intestine because it's a very deadly weapon. Yes. They stab the intestines and all it comes. Yes, yes. It there is a procedure of stabbing also. Step, can you, is it true or am I, re, uh, you know? Okay, okay. Uh, if you look can at the, talk a little bit about the Chris Seven yes. Curves? Yes, Thank I you, can. sir. Okay, Thank you. Welcome. Very good. Excellent. <laughs> excellent. I really love your, your presentation. Okay, let me, take another, let me take another Chris. Let me take a look. Hold on. Okay, uh, talking about Chris. Okay, uh, a Bugis Chris, a Bugis Chris typically is not curvy. It's it's just it's just a straight blade. Okay, if you look at, if you look at Bugis Chris, this the this is typically a Bugis Chris. It's a straight blade. They don't they don't have curves. The curve ones are of Malay influence. You know they go to Malay, they go to Java, then they have they adopt the curve. So the Bugis Chris is straight because it it go it actually built in accordance to their principle of life. Straight. Uh, you know, is, straight. They don't want to. They are. They don't be considered somebody who's uh, fickle-minded or uh, undecisive. You know, like if you look at the you know, the character of the Bugis, which I say about sail, sailing, right? They they will be very very definite. They will be very abrupt. So it is. So it's built along the lines of the Chris, which is straight. So this is typically a Bugis Chris, or or they call it Sapukala or Sapokal. Just one blade. Okay. Now killing killing is the same, like, no, you, you when you kill from, from a straight, straight blade, you no, know, they normally will do some twisting here and there to to cause damage. But when you look at the when you look at the curved blade, the curved blade <coughs> will will cause more damage. Uh. You know, because why it's curvy, it's curvy. When you when you as you step into the body, you will hit left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right until you get a very big orifice. Uh. 
And then they just, they just went it to, to bleed. Okay, that is the mechanical part of it because I'm a mechanical engineer, so I look at the mechanical aspect of the trace. But then again, uh, in, in the Malay, in the Malay uh, concept, uh, a trace with uh, the number of wavy, number of waves denotes his rank or denotes his appointment. Okay, for, for Chris with three waves, three waves, huh? normally Pahlawan or Warrior. Uh, they call it, they call it Lok, Lok Tiger. Lok Tiger. Then you have uh, Lok Lima. Okay, Lok Lima probably, I may be wrong, there are some experts here. Uh, five will be the Bandahara. Bandahara. Then you have seven. Okay, you have seven. Like, you see seven. So all these waves has uh, its own meaning. Uh, I can I can post it in, in I can post this in Bugis Masse later on. You can see the the concept of this wavy. So uh, the wavy denotes a uh, different status and appointment. Okay, but, but, but for the Bugis, they prefer to have a straight blade. This is also a Bugis blade, also a Bugis blade, but it's of Sumatra influence. Uh, so then, so to answer to answer to go to the next step of, of your question is when I did. My collection, my, my Chris collection, it actually helped me identify my genealogy as well. It helped me identify the diasporic community or the migration community, migration nature of the Bugis. When the Bugis settled in Sumatra, they built a Chris of this picture of this uh, shape. When they settled in, in Malaysia, they built a Chris of a particular shape. So the Chris also tells how the Bugis migrate. That's my, that's my answer. Uh, bro, uh, can can I ask you one question? Uh, can you? <laughs> it's me. <laughs> oh, Faisal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, okay. 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 Uh, why don't you show them about the uh, difference uh between the the, the blade that uh, you show the priest and the uh lobo batang that you have? That means the uh the body. Oh, the body. Okay, okay. Which okay. is a primary weapon that we yeah. always use. Okay, okay. Hold on. Let me let me take the body. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, thanks, Faisal. Okay, uh, Andy Faisal, just to share with you, he's he's the expert in the, the martial arts, which I mentioned his name earlier on. Okay, this is the Badik. Now, in, in the Bugis weapon, in the Bugis uh, attire, the Chris is actually a, 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 a symbol of uh, the symbol, it's just an attire. Okay, uh, on top, in Malay, they saw they say Perhiasan. Okay, but the, the primary weapon, the weapon of choice, the weapon of, of, uh, of combat is the badik. This is called a badik. Okay, badik. So the badik is the badik is the primary weapon. Okay, it's short, it's close quarter combat. Okay, um, and this what this is how badik looks like. Yeah, badik. So this is called badik jantung. Huh? Looks like a like a heart. So this is what they this is what they 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 used to, to fight. Okay, they can you can hold this way, you can you can hold you can hold this way, you know, you can, you, you can fight. So uh, this is the primary weapon. So this primary weapon they, they usually they usually put it on, on, on the side, on, on the side, no? on the side. And if let's say if they're not if they really want to fight, if they really want to fight, or they want to show to their opponent that they are they mean business, they want to settle it once for all, they will actually they will actually push up and take up, push a blade this way. They open the blade halfway like that. And they come forward, which and he'll tell the opponent that I'm not happy with you, no, let's settle. Uh, so that was the that's the Bugis concept. Uh, so this this is the primary weapon, the Badik. Huh? So the Badik will be one on the side, the Chris will be one in front. So they, they normally have normally carry uh, two side arms. So that's 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 Bugis. But you don't see them wearing today, you know, on the streets, like, no? they only wear it during the ceremonial or, or events. Okay, any any questions? Yeah. Any more questions? Sorry, Chan, you have uh, Jerome, can I ask? Mm. Yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Tan Kun Siang has a question. Yeah. Uh, Sarofian, uh, <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, my ancestors uh, come from uh, Black Earth. Yes. And uh, according to history, uh, we are known as the Malacca Chinese. Yeah, and uh, it seems that they traded uh, extensively with the Bugis. Oh, that's in cool. Singapore. Oh, that's nice. 
All right. Um, now, my question is, uh, what was the motivation for the Bugis to travel from Sulawesi to Singapore? Oh, that's good were they uh, in search of um, adventure or were they in search of profit or uh, were they driven out by the Dutch? Okay. Mm. There is, there is, a, there is there are lots of uh, uh, misconceptions and also beliefs that uh, in the year 1669, there was a diaspora. Okay, uh, when I talked to Professor Wang Gungwu uh, earlier this year, because he was also one of, one of those people who actually helped me uh, contribute. He contributed to my, my book. Like, I'm actually doing a book many years right now, but it's going to be a very solid one. He said to me, Sarafian, don't use the word diaspora. Because the Bugis and the Chinese didn't run away from the island. They come to trade. So it sets me thinking that the Bugis were, were not running away from the Dutch, nor the Chinese running away from some, some, you know, some, uh, some enemies. No? They just come in freely to trade. They come in to trade, they, they, they bore children, some of them decided to live here and not going back to their, their country. Okay, you see, the, the, uh, people, when you read texts, they say, oh, the Bugis uh, ran away from um, uh, Sulawesi in the year 1669 because there was a Perang Makassar, there was a war, civil war. They said that the, the Bugis left Marcus, uh, Sulawesi because of the Dutch. If you look at some of the historical uh, records, like this book, uh, uh, this not a huge book, uh, Tufa al -Nafis. So this Tufa is actually a history of, 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 the, of the Bugis. Uh. They mentioned that the Bugis actually has actually came to Singapore as early as the 7th century, as early as the 11th century. Why Tolok Blanga got its name? Because the Bugis gave it Mabalango, which, is, which means Anchorage. Uh, so the Bugis has been coming to Singapore very, very frequently. And when the Bugis traded in Singapore and Blanga, they were already Chinese kampongs. They were already uh, people, uh, Chinese with long hair. You know, if you look at the book, uh, Golden Kersonis, they mentioned that the Chi there were Chinese and also the, or and the natives that plunder ships that pass across the narrow streets. Uh, they were also pirates uh, with, the, with the Malays there in Tolok Blanga. So, so Singapore is already, already a happening for, and um, the Bugis were already trading in those period. So to to say that the Bugis travel due to the Dutch, I think is that one is something very very subjective. Okay, the, the motivation of the Bugis sailing to Asia to Singapore, even to Madagascar, is to trade. They, they look for wealth. They look for wealth. Uh, uh, they trade um, to uh, to expand their their business. Okay, there are lots of business, there are lots of Bugis traders, uh, landowners in Singapore before. You know, I, I also have it in my in my in my records. So they just they just come to trade. The motivation is to trade. The motivation is to to uh, to reinvent things. They get the Chinese silk. They get the they get the pattern from the Indian, from the Indian. So then they create their own Bugis temple. Okay, the, the, the Chinese want silk cumber, yeah, silk cumber right? Uh, called, in, in Bugis called trepang. The Bugis actually went all the way to Australia to harvest all the sea cucumber and sell to the Chinese. Yeah, they sell to the Chinese because the Chinese will pay them very highly. And this trade has been going on since uh, 15th century, 16th century, until the Dutch came. When the Dutch came, they didn't use Makassar as their exchange port for this sea cucumber, but used Singapore. So that's, that's, that's the motivation. They just get wealthy. Every, in the year, in the year, eight, in the year uh, 1790, in the year 1800, they say that one Bugis ship, when they trade with the Chinese or with anybody in Singapore, they could make as much as $4,000. Okay, that, that's the, that's, I, I can't remember, I don't know how, the, how they calculated $4,000 in that time, but then that's, that was equivalent of what they make at that era. So today, $4,000 would be a lot. So that, that motivates the Bugis to come. Okay, there are, there are, I've, got, I've got accounts of uh, some of the Bugis sailors, which I went to Makassar, and also some people in Kalimantan, they came forward to me and shared with me the stories. That would be another long, long story. Like they said to me they love Singapore. They come to Singapore. Some, some of them, you know, they came to Singapore to check their harvest of babies. No? So every six, nine months, they, six months, they come over here and say, oh, now my, my wife gave birth to baby. They go back there, you know, they have another family coming to the family. So they have, they have lots of families. Like. So luckily, the, the Muslim can let them marry for so they have families everywhere. So some of them, some of them settled here, some of them, they just went back there. When, when, when Makassar was declared a free port 
in the year 1843. So a lot of Bugis actually went back to Makassar. Uh, but some of them, they settled to Singapore. So that's the motivation. Well. Okay, so Mr. Tan has Sarafian answered your questions. <laughs> Yeah, uh, thanks, thanks very much, uh, Jerome. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Okay, so we have another question coming in from Rami. Uh, yes, she said that what percentage of what you have said is uh, oral history? Because as we know from Western point of view, right? Anything that is oral is not official his historical record compared to written record. And okay. this will have an impact on your research and claim with, with regard to Bugi's history. Okay. So how much of what you say is oral? Okay. okay. Uh, that's the problem with our academics today. That's a big problem. Whenever I speak about uh, records, you know, historians say, oh, we don't get all, rec all records. But you know, like, you know, Sejaram Layu or King Arthur, these are all, all records. Do you want to debunk these records? Sejaram Layu is an oral record. The other texts I don't mention are also of oral record. Okay? Those were mentioned uh, a thousand years ago or a hundred years ago. Okay, and people like me, and people like my grandfather or your, your grandparents start to say, don't you want to debunk that as an oral record which is not valid? If we have that mentality until today, we will not have history of Singapore. If you, if you still think that oral record is a, is a rubbish, eh? then what's the point of having genealogy and having oral records and having expert oral academics in NUS to see, oh, oral records are good. Because I, I do have met with one, I, I spoke, speak to one of, the, one of my friends, uh, Ka Singh, isn't it? from NUS. I asked him, how valid is oral record? He says, Sarafian, to make an oral record very valid, we need to have at least about three or four people who have the same thinking. That oral record could be true. Okay, then again, Mr. Ravi, I don't say that what you say is not, is not correct. Yeah, there are some oral records that, that was being romanticized or sensationalized to make things look good. Okay? So that is all up to us to justify whether the record is valid or not. But whatever it is, whatever you collect today after this presentation from your parents, even if you find it very, very fairy tale, it's best you record it because this fairy tale has a reason for it to be fairy tale. It has a reason for it has a reason to be mentioned. Okay, like you say, Singapore the Langa Toda, the swordfish attack Singapore. Okay, I think it sounds very funny, very rubbish. But there are reasons to why it's called why it's called a swordfish attack Singapore. There are reasons to that. Uh, so this all this this all records which sounds very mythical, very fairy tale. There are reasons behind why is it mentioned. So then, so if you were to do any any uh, interview with your family, just write it down, because you may have some other information that may overlap that all record, and this all record could be true. Okay, that's my answer. Yeah, so Sarafian say that there must be some reason behind this oral history. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and we need to look further into it, you know. Exactly. Yeah, and it might not be just a Western point of view. We have our own point of view. Yeah, the Westerns always say that we, our records yeah. are, are rubbish, yes. but you know, they have, yeah. they have their own yeah. set of uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. problems. So it's a matter of perspective. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Mm. So we have a raised hand from a person with ID Huawei Nova 3i. Do you have something to say? Oh, oh. can you hear me? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. Farley, yes. <laughs> yes. What's the question? I don't know. Can hear? Can hear? Yes, can hear. yes, yes. Oh, okay, 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 sorry. Okay, actually, my, my question is, you know, um, uh, by the way, uh, congrats, Sarafian, Sali, Tola, Bugis, on this talk. On the, the minority of uh, Buginis in Singapore, is it due to because that they are, I mean, because of being able, they are afraid of because we are being able as a pirates and uh, Bugin and uh, bu, uh, Boogie, boogie man. <laughs> and uh, I mean, most of the ladies are labeled as a very garang, I mean, which means it's a fierce. And, and also, um, actually, we are not fierce. Right? Actually, I am not fierce. I am not fierce. <laughs> <laughs> I hope saying I'm that, not. keep saying that. But, <laughs> but but it's just that because maybe we 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 uh, because of um, we believe in stand for the rights. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I answer. Okay. Uh, actually, this re re reminds me back to my early teenage days when uh, my sister, you know, when, when my sister has friends, then my parents told her, uh, don't say you're boogies. If you're boogies, you won't get married. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, then it sets me thinking also. Then 
Or then they say that you know, you know like they say that the Bugis, Bugis ladies are fierce. But as I grow older, as I mix around, I find that all the ladies are fierce, you know. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> no la, I'm not. Okay, la, okay, 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 <laughs> okay. So, so uh, uh, that that is actually a, a very mythical con- misconception uh, about the Bugis ladies and also uh, Bugis uh, uh, as a whole. Yeah, uh, because our because our identity has been sculptured to has been ingrained to other people that we are very very abrupt, we're very fierce. Uh, uh, we don't talk so much, uh, but when we talk, we ju- we just we are very aggressive. So um. Yeah, that I believe. Uh, I uh, so so uh, so every every community have the perception towards this boogie stuff, and I'm sure uh, there are also other misconceptions misconceptions of uh, other community. You know, the Javanese, the Binangs, the Boyanese. They have their own misconception. They have their own misconception. So uh, I think it's all about it's all about understanding and, and trust. You know, if you uh, if you find that person is okay, then you you can you can you can. You can move forward or can live with him. So, um, yeah, uh, this myth will still will still carry on. Will still will still uh, be in our 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 mind. Like 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 the hak- they say the Hakka speak very loud, the Teochew very very outspoken. Huh? So these are the things that has been ingrained to us. So it's up to us to connect or otherwise. So I'm talking about the Bugis, uh, Bugis being uh, garang of just perhaps uh, some of them. But if you look at me, so no, I'm very, very easy, easy going. <laughs> okay, yeah. next, next okay, question. So yeah. Shall we have one more last question from uh, Faiza Ahmad? He raised his hand. Ah, yes, Faiza. Hi, Sharafian. Uh, yes, sir. First of all, I'd like to say thank you so much for all the effort that you have put in. Thank you, Faiza. Uh, I congratulate you for all the things that you have done. Uh, thank my best. question for you is during the course of uh, finding your Finding or exploring the genealogy, the identity of the movie. Uh, what is your biggest obstacle that you have faced? Your biggest Good question. Oh, yeah. Actually, I had lots of obstacles. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, I, I, had, I had some family members who wants to disown me. I had some family members who, who asked you to stay far away and don't come back. I have family members who gave false information. Uh, some people who say to me in Chinese, say, okay, kyang. Huh? Excellent. Yeah. Uh, so it's a very tough journey. You know, okay, but I'm not going to scare you. Please, uh, I, I hope you all don't feel scared and don't do your, your genealogy after this talk. Okay, wow. you must do. The thing, the thing is, uh, uh, the thing is, uh, when you do your lineage, it's very, very simple. Okay, like now, you, after this, you can do your lineage. Can you hear me? Mm, yes. Uh, yeah. Okay, I thought, I thought I lost everyone. No, 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 no. Okay, Continue. you see, when, when, you do, when you do a genealogy, the, the lineage is very simple. Okay, the grandfather, father. But once it comes to uh, cousins or, 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 or grandparents, or, no, you realize it's just people who don't talk to each other. Okay, that's, I'm speaking of myself. Okay, I, I'm not Paisi, I just share. So there are people who don't talk here, don't talk here, because in families, so there are lots of politics, especially when it comes to, you know, you know don't, don't say that. So, uh, it's a big challenge. It's a very big challenge. So sometimes the story that I, I, I get came from friends, came from people who know my great grandfather dying Dasin, the police officer, the Garang one. Okay? Some people say he's different, he's a very nice guy. Oh, he's very congenial, very generous. So challenges, definitely there are challenges if you really want to go deeper into history. There are certain things that you don't mention. No, there are certain things that they, it's a past, really the past, don't mention. Some people don't want to talk. But these people who don't want to talk, normally they have lots of juice in them. So I suggest uh, if these people who are very quiet, you just write about them. Okay, you can write, they are very quiet. You just write. And the most important thing is that you speak to them before it's too late. Uh, before they pass away. You better just see, just meet them. See, for me, you know, uh, I, I know there's this guy called, uh, in Facebook, it's called Intan Legam. Huh? I, I know he's, he's, he's very, very knowledgeable in political. And um, lots of stories about my family, Plotako, is hidden. No? It's hidden because he was once a pro Tamangong, pro the Johor Sultan. No? So he, his his story was was a lot was a lot hidden, and I, I actually discovered why la, no? which I will share with you in a different presentation. So the, so these these stories are very very intriguing, 
uh, very disturbing, reverberates the soul. But it's very interesting because when I was looking for the history of my family, Portugal, I discovered the history of Portugal itself before it became an army depot. It was once a Portuguese stronghold, it was once a Dutch stronghold, it was once a, it was a, it was a, it was a busy port, it was a busy thing. And some people say the Plotakung, because of it being a ship repair, a ship repair, a ship yet, no? it was called Pulau Tukang. Pulau Tukang, Tukang means uh, to repair. So the names actually evolved. If you look at the names of the Singapore map, if you look at the names of the streets in Singapore, some of them might be related to your family. You'll be very surprised. And one way is to do genealogy. Okay, I'm not selling Koyo, huh? genealogy, genealogy. But genealogy is the most important tool you can use to identify the history of family and the history of a country. So challenges are there, definitely. Yeah, okay. it's how, so, you, how yeah. you take it. So Sarafian also mentioned some of his challenges and obstacles, you know, compiling his genealogy and along the way also found many interesting culture and history as well. Yes. Right. So uh, uh, we shall conclude here. But before this, uh, uh, let's take, okay, uh, you may want to look at our Facebook group uh, by searching Genealogy Society Singapore. You know, and you can uh, find out more about our latest event through this uh, Facebook group. Uh, you can also look at our website, you know, to learn more about our society, uh, our and also inquire about our membership. All right. So we shall end our talk for today. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very for much. Attending. Thank, thank, thank you, you very thank much, you, Sarah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank all you. my friends who attended, my cousins. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>